that that day, I mean, at the, at the end of the day, what I did, I was either going to be a hero or a zero. I was either going to go in there and find them all dead and get them out, or if I'd have went in there and it hadn't been as bad as I thought it was, I'd be going to jail for disobeying a direct order. Over about five minutes, I asked three times. So what was it that you could hear on the radio that made you want to go in? Um, well, everybody was saying that they were trying to get out. And Lieutenant Johnson came over the radio and said that, or not Lieutenant Johnson, Gunny Kinnefick said that he, he's pinned down so bad he can't even shoot back because they're in the house right next to him, shooting at him. And then um, Lieutenant Johnson called in a grid, or called in a, a fire mission, perfect fire mission, you know? It wasn't like it, the mission was messed up or there's any reason they shouldn't give it to us. Gave a 10 digit grid and immediate suppression on an on-call target. And they told him, you got, you got a knife? They told him that, um, that his fire was denied, that he's too close to the village. And then he said, if you don't give me the rounds, I'm gonna die. And they said, try your best. And that's whenever I knew it was time for me to go in. And that was the last transmission I heard from him. And then as I'm going in, what confirmed it was is Gunny Kinnefick started trying to call in a grid that he was that someone had, had he had he was trying to get a medevac in. So, um, so you're sitting in the in a gun truck, how far off? And you're listening to all this chatter about a mile. Uh, I looked at uh, Staff Rodriguez Chavez and said, "Hey." Let's go. And he went in there with me. He drove me. Have you seen me get a screwdriver off the back of the truck? Smash it. Is it hard to relate to people back here? It is, especially people my age. Imagine trying to do that. I can't, I can't get along with, I mean, I can hang out with them a little, but they just have no goals in life, it seems like. Difficult, you think, because of <clears throat> all you've done already in such a short amount of time, and yeah. no, no common ground, no common language. Yeah, I think that's what it is. You know, like they just their priorities are somewhere else. You know, they'd rather be worrying about how they're going to drink their next beer, or you know, their parents are still paying for their stuff. So, you know, we just can't really relate. I have goals and I got stuff I want to do, you know. I want to be successful, so I can't really, I don't have time to hang out and let my parents pay for my stuff. Is this? Oh, yeah. Just forget I said goals. Uh, no, I mean, I want to be, I want to own my own business. Probably something in this field. I'm going to have to go get another one of these. Here in Kentucky? Yeah, probably. Or wherever, wherever the money's at. Just one of them? Yeah. Just that kind right there. So. What did you miss about Kentucky when you were deployed? Nothing. 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 What do you miss about the Marine Corps now that you're not in? 
Um, I miss the guys. I, miss, I, you know, I don't really. I miss some of the guys. I miss like the discipline. Like one thing is, you come out here, and it's just like with my cousin's job. If my if the boss usually stops working, but everybody else thinks they need to stop working. You know, the Marine Corps is not really like that. So it's just the discipline. I think. You know, actually having a structure you know there's so many laws out here that people can really do what they want they can tell you they don't want to work and you're gonna have to pay them you have to have a legit reason to fire them there's so many loopholes you know and the marine corps is not like that so so when you own your own business how would you treat your employees like what did you learn in the marine corps that i'll carry over to your um le leadership be fair um i guess one thing i did with all my guys that i would do is I, I wouldn't try to act like I'm better than them just because I'm the boss. You know, I try to make sure they know that I'm at their level, but um, you know, and get off and work. So I wouldn't just be on the on the bobcat like just to be an operator the whole time while somebody else is out doing the work outside. I would, if I was done doing that, I would get off and do it with them, stuff like that. If they're up at seven o'clock starting work, well, I'm going to be there at six thirty to let them know that I'm more dedicated than they are. So I always had one thing. When I was in the Marine Corps, if someone always corrected me for something, I would always look back at them and see how they were. You know, it didn't matter what rank they were at. I got into a huge argument outside of uh, out in Kanyoi Bay with a, uh, a bunch of staff sergeants. They came in on the Mew, and um, you know, they they yelled at me. I just got out of the field. I'd been there for a week and a half. And my feet were all messed up, so I didn't have socks on in my shoes. And uh, it's because they were so blistered. Well, this staff sergeant stops me just for the sole fact that I didn't. I, he stopped me for something. He, he was trying to quote a reg to me, and I looked at him and I said, "Well, staff sergeant, you didn't shave this morning, and you could only imagine what that did." Three other staff sergeants come over, and I was like, "Well, you didn't shave either this morning." And so they're like, "Who's in charge? You this and that?" And they're like, "Oh, look, you don't even have socks." I'm like, "You're right, I don't." They're like, "I can't believe you. you're so nasty with your long hair, this and that." So. Um, they're like, who's in charge? And I told him, I was like, Gunner Sergeant Soto Rodriguez. So, you know, of course they always pull that. Well, I'm going to call your commander, this and that. And I never did. But I would, that's how I was. I, I would always call people out. I mean, what's right's right. You know, if they're going to call me out for it, then they're the leadership. I'm a direct reflection of you, Staff Sergeant. You didn't shave. I didn't shave either. So, that got me in a lot of, I got in trouble on Bagram right after this incident. Um, not right after, but as I was going home. It's freezing cold, it's middle of December on Bagram, you know, and I'm walking around with my hands in my pockets. And there's that, that's an ongoing argument inside the Marine Corps of you can't have your hands in your pockets. And this first sergeant comes up to me, not a, not a Marine first sergeant, but a Army first sergeant, and goes, hey Marine, get your hands out of your pockets. I'm like, show me the regulation that says that I can't have my hands in my pockets. He said, well, why are your hands in your pockets? He said, because they're cold. And he said, uh, he said, well, you can't walk with your hands in your pockets. I said, that's... That's, that's crazy. So you show me a reg and I'll do it. He said, well, I don't have to show you a reg. I'm a first sergeant. I was like, well, that's not good enough. So, you know, just small stuff like that.